I'd like to call the this, uh, RTM Parks and Recreation Committee regular meeting on Wednesday, September 13th to order. Um, we'll have the attendance. I, I taken You've it. You've already taken it? No, I think we're good. Okay. No, ma'am. That's good for me. Um, approval of the minutes of 5-3. Um, I have a correction. Okay. Um, under, and I have this written out for you, Savannah. Well, okay. Under working groups and other reports, under Monuments and Ceremonies mm -hmm. Commission, it, it's, uh, should they just read what it should say? Sure. Okay. Is it the first, <coughs> in the first paragraph, or is the whole it's thing has to be redone? Under just My, the, oh, the first, okay. the first one. The blurb. It should say, Diane Conalug reports that the current chair of the Memorial Day Parade Committee is hoping for someone to work with him and to take over the job next year. I think it, it actually states that um, it, the chairman okay. of the committee. Okay, let, so D Diane Conlock reports that the current, oh, oh, thank you. Actually, I didn't do these minutes, so no. Alicia's gonna have to make the corrections because I don't have this on my Word document. I might have, I might have saved it to my, okay. so I might be able to do it, <clears throat> actually. Oh, no, we don't, we don't do that anyway. We don't do what? We don't. We oh, don't, you don't correct it. We don't correct it. We just we correct just, it in the we minutes. We just put it in the minutes. Okay, got it. Yeah, okay. I think we got corrected I'll just, by. I'll just the town clerk the, minutes, the last yeah. time we did that. So, okay. Anything else? Yeah. No, that was just the, the correction. Can I keep that paper so I? Yes. Can? Okay. Great. Absolutely. Uh, anyone? Any other corrections? Okay. Oh, may have. Uh, let's see. I moved. I may have a motion. To, to uh, approve the so correct moved. to minute. Thank you. Second. Okay. Cheryl and Susan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. <coughs> okay. What we're really here for today is to discuss and vote on an acceptance of a gift of up to two hundred thousand dollars from the Darien Little League for the reconstruction of fields at McGowan Park. Now I hope everyone read every single page of the thing I sent you of this of their evaluation. Um, Actually, I did. Did you? You're good. <laughs> yes, There's Patty. Right. I didn't yeah. have to bring my phone wow. so we could look at it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. Probably nasty weather too. It's always so. It's always like then Fairfield County. Yeah. And you know, like stops. you're flying. It was it was a lot of traffic. I was surprised for a middle of the week, it but I'm here. Fails. <laughs> it never fails. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So we're just getting to uh, to the uh, gift. Um, so actually, the um, that that packet was uh, the commission got last in June, but I could not afford it for the life of me, and so I thought. To you at the time, mm -hmm. so so I asked. That's why I asked uh, Pam to send it to you now. And even they had trouble doing it. It's big. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pictures too. I think that mm -hmm. that's it's very thorough. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it's very thorough. So anyway, uh, anybody have any questions about it? You know what they're going to do? They're going to strip the infield and replace the that. Uh, and uh, where does the see. money come from? Okay. I mean, I realize this name on the paper, but how do they collect two hundred thousand or whatever? I don't know if they have it already or if they're going to fundraise for it. I'm not sure which. But it's all from local citizens of the town of Darien. I think he said. I think it's they, yes, no, it's Darien in Little. It's Darien the Little. Kids in the yes, program. They pay quite a bit now, much more than when our oh, kids were. Oh, I thought old. it was free. <laughs> okay, no. No. way back. No, even with the Parks and Rec and recharge uh, fees for uh, using the using the fields. Okay. Um, so, but remember, uh, we approved back in March. The RTM approved the fifteen thousand dollars gift of yes. the Little League to, to, for this evaluation. So you saw the evaluation, and they found that um, they need to fully reconstruct the infield to skin it and reconstruct it. They need to widen the bait, the first and third base paths to allow the, which would allow for the machines to assist in field maintenance. It'll give them an opportunity to examine and test the sub-base material and drainage properties. 
and to relocate the infield skin irrigation heads. Um, they need to be moved back because they're going to widen those where they run. Move them back a little bit, maybe, and add some, probably. Uh, so the estimated cost for the reconstruction of the athletic fields is in the range from 130,000 to 150,000, and um, it was suggested that they put make it make the re, make the gift up to 200,000 in case they ran over. And something. that was suggested at the Parks and Rec Commission meeting mm -hmm. that a lot yeah. of us were there. Jack was there, and yeah. he recommended just in case there has just to bump it up, bump it up a little bit, just so we're covered if there's so a little bit have, of bumper. So they don't have to come back yeah. to the RTM again to give more to for something else. So. Mm -hmm. So they hoped to, uh, and they also wanted it done. I think that was it. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're hoping to do it this fall, and so it's ready for the spring. And it, the Board of Selectmen have approved the gift, and, and the, what I have here says that the, um, um, which is what went to the Board of Selectmen, that they aim to include it on the agenda of the Board of Finance meeting. Not sure they have to do anything with it or not because the um, the um, funding mechanism is going to be that the uh, park and rec will go out to bid for it, but that the little league is going to pay the vendor directly. So, um, anybody have any questions? I thought it was one of the most thorough um, overviews. That's what I said. <laughs> That's what thorough, said. Right? That's I was hard. like, this is. Yeah. They did a good job. Yeah. Really good job. So. We have a motion to accept the Darien Little League gift of up to $200,000 for the reconstruction of the fields at McGowan Park. So moved. Okay, Diane moved. Second. Sandy second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. okay. Um, next on the agenda is the working groups and committee updates. I thought it uh, seems like there's a lot of things that are happening and all, all over in all the parks and so forth. And so instead of just going straight to the committees, what I like to do is go to each um, park and then have your committee, you guys chime in on the stuff that's rel you know, related to you in the, those parks. And then when we finish, if, if there's other stuff that, you need, that needs to be said, we'll go, go over that then. But um, it was like, ah! So let me start with weed. I'll do weed. It's a 2023-24 capital budget item. It's, it's the one pat, that one paddle court has been stripped and resurfaced, and it's done. And it looks great. I was, was not really going to look at that. I was going to look at the, uh, to see where, if they done, had started or not, the, um, the sixth paddle court. And Tuesday, I guess. And uh, I ran into Jim Coggins, so I got all sorts of information. He was taking pictures of the new court, so then I realized we had the new, the, that the court really had been, it really looks good, and so that's the first one. The of, redone one. The redone one. That's the first one to be redone, and I think it was $20,000 in our, um, for the next five, four, four, yeah, next four uh, years. Well, they will do one each year. So. Um, so that's a capital 2324 budget item. The, um, the six paddle court, which is ARPA funded, and the um, funding has been increased $30,000. The ARPA committee reconvened, I think everybody knows that, and, uh, and they closed out some things. They put a lot, moved some money into contingency, and then they, um, added some things to their list. And so they incre and some of the and some of the um, projects are going to cost more than they than they had anticipated. So this is ARPA funded the six paddle court increased it thirty thousand dollars to a total allocation of one hundred and eighty five thousand. And uh, they've received PNC approval but it's still in the permitting process with the town waiting for the vendors to submit upgrade design to get final bidding approval. And that meeting got moved to September 20, what was the date? Fourth, I think. Okay. Let me see, PNC, when did they, uh, write it down here. I don't know why, I didn't write it down. 
It had a two handle. It was it got moved back from. Yeah. I'm not sure which. Two I'm weeks. Not, I'm yeah. Not two ways. I have to look. Yeah. Hmm. Did I down? Anyway. So and then there's the Weed Beach Meadow and Trail project, which, uh, if you remember, the um, it, the uh, bid package for it was in there originally in our capital, and then it was removed because the Darien Foundation the foundation said they would give the fifteen thousand dollars for the um, bid package, as well as up to three hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the project if it can be done this year. And <clears throat> so the update on that is it's scheduled to go before PNC on September 26th. That's the one that's, that's the to go one through. that's on Sorry the 26th. about that. Yeah. 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 So they've been through PNC. The paddle port has been through PNC. Do we know what the holdup is? On well, I think what, by what they stand about wait, waiting for the vendors to submit an upgrade design um, to get the final bid, building approval. I think um, Jim told me that they ha they have the bid. I mean, they're ready to go. They just need this permitting to be, to finish it up. So we'll see. Like it, it, there was a little bit more that they needed to do when they from when they first went to. Uh, PNC. So that's that. Any questions? So just stop me, guys. <coughs> uh, so that's it for uh, that's all I have for Weed Beach. Uh, any? I don't think we have any. Yeah, we don't have any any uh, committee. Any any? I can't think of anything there. Okay. Other than me with the Weed Beach Meadow and Trail. Highland Farm, uh, ARPA funded, a new allocation. $30,000 for landscaping, 15 trees, 15 shrubs. They want to plant this fall. Did you say 30,000? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. For trees. 15 okay. trees, 15 shrubs. Mm -hmm. I think they decided not to, you know how nicely landscaped it was before. Turns out that the company would not stand behind that which died. And I think I some of that trees. money went to signage. Cheryl, I think some of that money went to signage. That's already been installed, is my gut feeling. Yeah, there's new no signs up there, too. Yeah. There are. There are. There yeah. are signs. They're good. I mean, they're good, clear signs now that fit within That's right. the they park. Did mention the design. I just don't think I the, it's wood around. But I mean, yeah. to me, 30K would seem like a lot. <laughs> for 15 yeah, trees, no. 15 shrubs, so I think that it did, may be also it did say, covering yeah, it did say what update, was done there. Update signage. Updated signage. Yeah, okay. I think. <laughs> We're going to be able to keep these watered. Well, that was the question yeah. I think that the selectmen asked when they, you know, um, and yeah. the answer was um, yes, but it wouldn't surprise us if there isn't a, a, a request in the next capital budget for a larger watering truck. I thought I saw it on one of the meetings that I was watching. Mm -hmm. that I think it was a select meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Monica yeah. asked for yeah. that yeah. because we do have the water truck that yeah. goes to Highland, it goes to Cherry Lawn, and it goes to the new plantings at Weed Beach. And I see those at guys. Tree. At Pear Tree. I'm sorry. Yes, at Pear Tree. And I see them watering. I mean, they're pretty consistent in water, watering yeah. down there, which is great. We had I'm glad to hear that because the last time there was a, there were an awful lot of dead trees and bushes. Correct. We had that horrible at Highland light uh, yes, uh, we did. it was very very hot this year we've had a lot more rain but as yeah, a result, last year was a disaster <coughs> yes. we planted died in yes, house, but they've been very uh, consistent I've seen them a lot at Pear Tree I've seen them in a lot at Highland and at Cherry Lawn so it's good but it does take them a while to fill up the truck to then disperse it you've probably seen it at your well Lawn I think they have to go it, back and consistent. forth a lot yeah refill it refill mm -hmm. it so as long as that's taken into consideration before we plant again I know that was the idea of some again I agree yeah where did they did, get the water they get it, I think, well, I know I can only speak at Cherry Lawn. They can fill it up at Cherry Lawn from the different water stations we have there. And then they probably fill it up to start with at the public work station and then oh, come so it like to Highland. It's town water. It's, but is it from the ponds and the no, creeks? God, and no, God, no. I don't think so. Uh, no. Definitely not the mm. very long green <laughs> pond. Okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, we're at Cherry Lawn 
Jerry Lawn is next. Um, tennis court project. Uh, capital budget funded. I didn't even know the beginning year because it's been going on for a long time. So, tennis court, uh, painting of the court started last week. Weather permitting, the project should be finished in the next few weeks. And the courts will be blue and green. Pickleball courts, smiley face that was painted on one of the courts will be painted over in the upcoming weeks with an appropriate paint color that is close to, as they could get to the original. Okay. 2023, 2024 uh, capital budget item, solar aerator project, scheduled to be installed in the upcoming weeks, trying for before October 7th. So it sounds like that is gonna happen. Molly Robinson, who is uh, um, a, one of the directors at Cherry Lawn, uh, or at the Nature Center, sent an email out, I think, to the selectmen and some other folks, and I just saw it before I pulled in because she had BCC'd me, because I had, uh, she had spoken, I, I had gone and asked her, remember, when we were, when the aerator was before the Board of Selectmen in this room, and we there were several of us that were pitching for that aerator right. to come. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the only reason she ended up BCCing me. But it, basically she had said, remember how she talked about a healthy pond is 10 to 12, whatever, I don't know what the, I don't have it in front of me. Um, um, for the oxygenation and Sherry Lawns was, yeah, was um, as was 5.6 like six is the is the level that you don't want to really be below we were at 5.6 she said she just did the sampling of it and it was at 3435 and that's at the top level of the pond where um, you would get the most positive oxygen so anything down below is in really really bad shape so her email to them was just please we encourage you to support it and get it done as soon as possible and reiterating that they do a big event on October 7th with the Nature Center and a lot of it is tied throughout the park but also down by the pond. Well, October so, 7th is the, is the I'm sorry, dedication. It, the dedication is the 7th but they do it right around that time um, so they were hoping that, that 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 was just one more little gentle push I think to get it done. Mm -hmm. So. I think you heard that one of the things is that that tree, that huge tree, Susan Daly and I um, uh, were at Cherry Lawn for a working group meeting at the playground and we saw Sandy um, for Parks and Rec crew and he, we asked him about the tree and he said because that tree is so big and has been in the pond for so long that they will have to, depending on who does it, if it's quick, um, which is the company, I forget his first name, Paul Quick. Um, he's got Orchard Tree. Orchard Tree. Thank yeah. you. Yes, mm -hmm. it's Orchard Trees. So they do a lot of our big work yeah. and um, that they would have to have kind of a crane to pull it up. And so that's a, you know, that's X amount. That's they're a dedicated, getting, getting that's a thousand them. bucks to have that for that day to pull it up. But that that's a focus to get that out and that starts to clear it out and then to put the aerator in. But that Pam had said that the aerator, the aerator she looked at came in under the price that she was considering. She hasn't bid it out yet, but she, I don't believe, but they were coming in. The things she was looking at were coming in. I think in she must, must under have, the because price. These were her, this was her notes saying it will be go in in the next and couple then, of weeks. Oh, well then that's, that's so, a great yeah. update. And they haven't forgotten the tree in there. Yes, They're getting yes. estimates. For but they got to do that out. first before <laughs> the aerator. So that's just kind of that update, and it is, if you haven't seen it, it's, I mean, I can pull it's it yes, it, it is it's green. really, really, really green. And, and it'll be the cool weather before you know, it gets better. really bad. Yeah, so, I got um, information from someone, too, mm -hmm. oh, that it's a, sent a letter to Pam. Is it a tree or, or No, this is a pond. I'm talking about that. No, that's oh, just a pond. Water. I'm sorry, yeah. you were saying? Yeah. I got um, an email from uh, a neighbor that was very concerned about the pond and the tree, and um, she forwarded me the information that Pam and Lori sent back to her. So it is moving forward Great. Yeah. and going to get this done. Yeah. Great. I will have to say that my River Lake in Virginia looks just the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> it's 
sorry to say. Like that narrator, right? Yeah. You're right. We had one, and then it stopped working, and then it's time to do something, you know, but it really looks bad. It needs help. Oh, and the gazebo restoration, as we know, it's all done. And so they're going to... Um, looks nice. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? it mm -hmm. They're going to dedicate it with a ribbon cutting, ribbon cutting at 10 a.m. on October 7th. And so, the, and the Dordelman family is going to be there. So, who, who you're, you are friends with, right? Or you grew I up with the daughter? The one daughter went to school with my daughter. Love that. Yeah, yeah. that's Our great. Daughter, yeah. And, and yeah. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I'm <laughs> So the ribbon cutting is October seventh at ten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's Columbus Day weekend. It's my oh. birthday. You can bring a cake. And oh. <laughs> that's well, a, a couple that's days later. We can share a cake. <laughs> <laughs> that's your birthday. Happy birthday in advance. That's Saturday. So Saturday, October seventh. Yeah. And actually, Yay, yeah. project done. Checked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that was a long time coming, but it looks great. And uh, the only thing else is the playground there, which is you know five hundred thousand dollars at ARPA funded. And you want to say what where you all are with the Cherry Lawn Playground? We have a meeting tomorrow. We had a meeting um, whenever it was two or three weeks ago, um, and we uh, were going to narrow down. So that 500K is for both playgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, that um, we know what we are keeping some of the items in the small area we're keeping the circular thing in the big area that was a newer mm -hmm. thing we were going to narrow it down to four bids but we allowed one person to come back and redo things because he hadn't really been given the full information so we really felt it was only fair that he got a lot of feedback from us on that meeting where he was part of that last meeting we did it via zoom that we allow the other three to kind of give it to so my opinion is like it's a big playground. We we want to get this right. That's my opinion. So we don't. I mean, we have a time frame. We have to get it done in. But um, you know, it's it's our most used playground. And so I think everybody's been really careful. We have a lot of good, I, a lot of great input. There's a you know, as you know, there's parent from every elementary school in there, um, and then like one parent who has five kids, another parent who has three kids, and they've given us a lot of active feedback. And um, so you, I can give you more update after tomorrow. Okay. Are you yeah. still looking for? I know you say you've lost a few members of the committee. No, we picked up two. We you we specifically two? had two more that are one oh, is the one with the five kids who is very good. Okay. Really good. Okay. So. So you're all set for that. I mean, yes. I listen to one. And when I say we lost two, they those two were never really active. We had a very strong crew, but two of them, with all due respect, just weren't active and that involved. So we made the decision to politely say, you know, if you. Don't have to continue on the, the next one, and they hit that bid. So we stuck with our crew, and then we added two. So all good. Patty, can I ask yes, you a question? Just because I, I'm sure. coming into this whole thing a little late. So, um, and you mentioned the elementary school parents are on there. So I know that obviously three of our elementary schools, the playgrounds will probably not be available once the construction starts. But right. as you guys are putting in these playgrounds. Is there any coordination with what's already at the elementary schools? Because certainly after school hours, people can go to the playgrounds at the elementary school. So I know that I had gone over to McGuan, to the new McGuan, mm -hmm. and it got me thinking, well, are we focusing more on, you know, if we, if we end up, not duplication, but certainly um, we, we wouldn't want to have anything the same at the We're, elementary schools. So we have photographed and a number of us have different done what we call site visits okay. not only just at the elementary schools here but at in New Canaan in different um, towns around here um, and then like Mead Park which is one that comes up That's constantly phenomenal. that people yeah. love Mead Park so um, I mean there's even one further up in Connecticut that someone was talking about but so what I tried to do is I listened to the mom's feedback about the items that yeah. they want and because they know all of that but then I'll say okay but you also have to recognize 
that's a town that has a huge amount of space. We have a dedicated amount of space, so that might look like a really great thing, but it's not going to fit into our little spot at Baker right. or Cherry. Well, I was even thinking more so the age of the kids. I mean, basically from five to, let's say, nine, they're, they're, down the road there's going to be five elementary schools that that age group can certainly go to. Now, obviously if the family's at Cherry Lawn, you want to have some items for that age group, but certainly, um, you know, the, the focus is like it, we have four other playgrounds, so hopefully there's not going to be too much We're trying, for the older and I, not a lot for the No, younger. it's a lot of younger kids okay. because what happens is, for example, there's zip lines at a lot, like at Royal and at Hinley, there's these incredible long zip lines that the kids love, but that allows for a lot of space. We can't duplicate that well, at Cherry Lawn. Want to and we don't want to duplicate that right. at Cherry Lawn. Um, and so... You're trying to make the different, that's different correct. playgrounds so we have different, the, we have too. The small Not just at Cherry Lawn, though. I mean, you... That was part of, right, you watch the meetings yeah. that yeah. we're trying to... Um, you know, we're not committed to just using the same vendor, but we're not, not committed. So that's what happened was the feedback was that this one vendor who did um, Maguan, it looks so much like what he recommended for Cherry Lawn looked so much like what we just had at Maguan, but he hadn't really been given that feedback. So we felt it was only proper to allow him to give him that feedback and comment. But we had the small kids pl pr playground, you right. know, which is really the, the two to five, or you could call it, you know, yeah. 18 months to five. And then the five to 12 year old right. is different. So the thing that people want the most that, and we've talked to a lot of people, every time we're there, we're taking um, feedback, but it's swings, slides, and climbing. That's a big thing that they want, swing, slide, and climbing. And then on the little kids one, they love like the rocking horse, they love the slides there, they love what they call the interactive pretend play. Mm -hmm. So if it's a little, um, lemonade stand that goes under one of the slides. So we did that. If you saw at McGuan, there yeah. is a little place under there. So um, it's been it's been a lot of fun to work on, but we're conscious of that, and we're open to all feedback too. Okay. So. And they've spent an incredible amount of time doing it too. But they've learned. You guys have learned a We've lot. We've learned it's very a lot. Clear. And yeah. then the balance of we did, you know, pour and play at McGuan to make it as handicap accessible as possible. And because we used to have the squares, the right. black squares yeah. there, and yeah. they started to pull up, and you know, as you know, so um, that's a nice smooth surface there. But it's expensive, and it does take up a lot of the budget. And so we're figuring out how we can do a little bit of that at at Cherry the Lawn to make it accessible, but still it's not going to be everything because it would take up too much of the budget, so we'll still have like the wood chips and things there. But um, So that's the update why on the March Why don't you say and to um, uh, Maguan and talk about, talk about the playground? Has, have, has everybody been over to see it by chance? I'm sure you have. Um, it looks great. It was packed. So I was there. I went the two days before because I... Um, we were bumping up kind of against the deadline because if you remember I think it was really hot or raining now if now it's been a, a few I think really it was hot. that it was really hot <laughs> so they pushed it back for when they were going to do the pour and play um, but they got it in and then what they did was there was uh, the front right end ended up being higher up and so you know we'd communicated with Pam about that and she was already on it with those guys and so we filled it with additional dirt and then we are seeding it's a special kind of seed. And then what she did was she put cones around there and she put yellow tape. Hydro, just to make hydro sure, seeding. Hydro seed, thank you. <laughs> just to make sure that for opening day and for that next week or two that it was it was safe. And so that was good. But you have um, you do have a much higher slide uh, and play area there. And that was one of the things that a lot of the folks on the group said, including some of the commission members that were on there, that Maguan is a playground that you know a lot of younger kids went but a lot of older brothers and sisters went too because they were always playing at the baseballs games right and the challenger leagues and softball and stuff like that so let's try and make it a little bit more for the older kids and so you have a smaller playground equipment to the left hand side you have the swings um, with a handicap accessible swing and then the other additional bay regular swings um, and the, then uh, the and inclusive whirl 
and then the in. inclusive world. It Did is, that go in? No, it's not been put in, but okay. it, but it, it has arrived. Yay. So it will be scheduled for, for putting it in. That'll be in the, in the center. Weeks. That's going to be a flat world. Remember when we were little and you'd get on those things and you'd almost kill yourself with all your brothers and sisters? Well, now they're a little, lot, lot safer. Uh, but it's a flat one. And the goal was to be, make that handicap accessible as well so you, um, someone in a wheelchair could come in and enjoy it as well and swing around. And then you have the higher tower there. Uh, um, that's got swings and slides and I mean the tower of slides and a lot of climbing elements and um, the one thing that the jury was out for me was this just one standing thing that kids <laughs> swirl oh on you heard me say that and I'm like so that little, doesn't look like blast. and can you and they love it they get off they totally and, love it and, 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 and they wonder said, right, said it's really fast <laughs> It's so She's funny. I love the little red and yellow cups that are at Cherry Lawn that they stay, and we'll yeah. keep those at Cherry Lawn because those were so. But I was like, Pam, really? It just doesn't look that much fun. They they love it if you go by. So that's been a really, really nice success. And they're tweaking things as they go along, like if we get feedback and we need to check mm -hmm. on something, Pam's all over it. So well, The Lions Club yeah. has donated and, and installed the fence. Did it go in this last week it's when in, I was at the wedding? In, yeah. Oh, yay. How's it look? Between the playground and the parking lot, uh, for, it's an additional safety measure. It looks good. You good. know, it looks like the, uh, yeah, the, sort of like the fence used to look around the, the parking lots at, at, in the interim parking lots before we got, we, we completely did them at Highland. Do you remember? You know, the, it just oh, yeah. Sort of, it's just, you know. It's, uh, <coughs> it's in. Terrific. And then the, uh, the ultimate goal is to get there, more shade wood, there. You know, you know. We helped to do some kind of shade structure there, but Pam's done a great job of putting additional um, picnic tables, like you've seen them all over all our parks. She really has done a great job there. And so, and thank you, ARPA. Thank you, ARPA. Um, that's just a hot park, you know, Maguan with the trees. So we do have all those trees that they do planted. They are getting bigger and bigger, but they hope to somehow get some kind of structure tucked over the side at some point down the line. Some of those um, tables are handicap accessible, weren't they? Mm -hmm. Done by one of the Boy Scouts. You're right, but I don't know if it's the ones there or not. But yes, he did. He did. I can't remember how many he did. Remember, were, it was they were a project. Two there and all of a sudden, yeah. there were four there. Yeah, you probably it, it probably was from him. But yeah, I, I mean, I, and the parents and the grandparents and the, the people caregivers are, are yeah. really happy because mm -hmm. it really was like one bench and one thing, and now there's a bunch. So it's a great gathering place, and obviously we have so many people coming in from Neroton Heights and that new area of development. So, mm. so that's 107 ARPA funded for 175 thousand dollars and. They've spent most of it. There's just a little bit encumbered now. The rest of it's been spent. Um, and there was one more thing for McGuan. Ah, they started on the, they started to work on the patio and foundation. Oh, uh, they've ripped it out. They started last they Monday. The trees down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had to. I know. Yeah. Little trees, mm -hmm. trees have roots. <laughs> yeah, they're the trees. problem. Some of those, those are big trees. But Patty, um, can you, bricks were well, really coming. They were really. It was unsafe. Including me. Thank you. Yeah. The so what were they? Where did they start on the foundation of it? Are they started down below, or were I they didn't pulling see up it. from the top? They pulled it off up the stuff up from the top. That, okay. That's what I saw. Uh, but it'll take three to four weeks. So the bathrooms will be closed, and they'll put a porta pot potty in. That's a really active. What was it? I think Saturday. There were baseball. It was packed with baseball. Yep. Yeah, packed. Opening yeah. season, so <laughs> opening week. Fall, fall, fall ball, fall ball. Yeah, yeah, great, great projects get yeah. done. Yeah, you're right. And uh, pear tree. He's <laughs> <laughs> looking your way, Cheryl. <laughs> well, the board of selectmen have decided and voted on to disband the pear tree beach working um, group and I feel that we've gone as long, as far as we could go. You mean the building committee? I mean the building committee, working group, building committee. And um, so we lost a lot of our members have moved on to other things. And so they decided to disband it for now and then we're gonna go out, to, um, the Weston and Sampson are going to do a bid package I believe that's about eight thousand, seven thousand, eight thousand dollars, and once they get that in, 
um, or some sort of a an approximate of what yeah, I'll, I'll, you want me to read exactly what it is yeah, like, yeah it, I just sort of dumped this on her Kate, See, Kate there was a transfer of eight thousand dollars from the Board of Finance Capital Reserve actually their their request have requested that it's gone through the selectmen and uh, the Board of Finance doesn't meet they didn't meet in August and they don't meet until the 19th I think the day after our meeting in uh, September so um but anyway, for preparation of an opinion of probable cost estimates for the Pear Tree parking lot, back beach, and boat ramp project. It's the first step before the construction bid package. Bid package capital budget is in the capital right. budget. Right, so I guess they want to just get an idea of how much this is going to cost and how far they want to go with it. And then if they go through with it, it's my understanding that then they will form another committee to follow that process through of the parking lot and the back beach and the boat ramp. Um, on another note, they planted plants um, at the end of June uh, by the shower stall um, and the bathhouse only, um, and they watered them pretty regularly and they survived except for one, but I think they replaced it. I was looking at it the other day, it looked really full. Um, came out really nice. They did a nice job on the uh, pavers along the side so that nobody would tripping over them when they come out and around. They made Are they flat. stone now? They're or? stone, so that's not going to be rotted wood anymore. Uh, and then along the roadside, they planted all beautiful trees and um, butterfly bushes and flowers and things, and they were watering that, and it was taking park and rec's men almost all day because they had to go get a, more water in the truck that they have. And so they put in a sprinkler system. And um, it was working there for a while, but then it, they came back and watered. So I don't know exactly what's going on. They cut the road to extend it over towards the boat club area um, by the gatehouse. So I'm assuming it's in, in working condition, but we've had so much rain that maybe that's it. Yeah. How right. do they put the work a, a sprinkler system in? That sounds like a much bigger expense than what was allotted there. Well, they um, transferred some funds from from the budget. Took some from beautification and some from uh, facility maintenance budget oh, okay. of this year's budget. Any idea how much a sprinkler system? Cost? I'm trying to think. It was. I could, you know, I, I think it was around eight thousand, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was around eight thousand. It was a lot less so, than I would. Or maybe think. less, you know, maybe a little less, maybe seven, you know. Did they put in a what? They did, um, you know. There's a wa there's whatever you call it, like the water faucet that you would have on the off side of your house. So that's how they were able to pull up and water there as well. So they were pulling. They had that from the pump from the line coming from uh, the bathhouse, I believe. Or was that coming from? I mean, if you go there, there are two. There's, it's there a are water connection from the street, and the, it it's was the there was a oh okay uh, like a manhole cover in there. Okay. So the connection was there, I believe, uh -huh. and then they connected it up above the ground, so that they could turn it on and off and do and, and attach the sprinkler system to so it. So is it more of an irrigation? Yes, system? it's oh, okay. okay. it's an irrigation okay. system. Yeah. It was really because. The, too many man hours. Oh yeah. Too too many man too hours many were being hours. used. So it was. So it's like in the end, it'll be. It'll yeah. Be, okay. It'll yeah. be worthwhile. And I don't think it was quite eight. It just seems to me it was two something and three. You know. So as far as pear tree goes, um, there were a few incidences this summer, which I will bring up to the commission. When I went to the commission meeting in May, I again in May, like I do every year, <laughs> request signage down there for more dog signs, more snow smoking park sign, and because it's a state law, an idling sign. None of them were granted. And it's really difficult when you have 95 degree heat and people go down to the beach and they sit in their cars because it's beautiful and want to be at the beach with their engines running, their motors are running. And now we have hybrids so they come on and they go off, and they come on and they go off. 
And so one day my friends and I um, moved our chairs three times up and down the beach because people insisted on idling, sitting in their car with the air conditioner on. I find it to be really annoying. Yeah. And I it's think that, that signage, at least I could get up and say, please turn off your car, there's the sign. Now at the beginning of, at one point <coughs> at the beginning of the summer, they did put up one of those plastic A-frame boards at the gate but the letters, no idling, were so faded, hmm. um, it really looked terrible. And I told Lori about that. I, I said it just, it just looked awful. So that disappeared. So there's no signage down there. There's one sign that says it's a sm smoke-free park, one dog sign at the gate, one dog sign on the front beach. So. I don't know what to do. I mean, it's it's gotten to be out of control. Um, I feel, my friends feel that if there's signage, at least you can get up and say, there's a sign. And you have backup. But when you have no backup, and I'm not calling the police for these dogs. I just refuse. When, does, when did the, um, I know Weed Beach goes longer. When did Pear Tree Point um, guards end? Did they just end Labor Day. the Labor Day? Yeah, Labor they Day. Extend them this year. Is there any feedback um, on how people felt about the guards? Was it different company? Um, the gate guard at Pear Tree did a great job this year. She was very, very good. I understood. I heard there were complaints about one There's somebody sitting in their car. But other than there Next, were two two different people, and one was excellent, two, one was and excellent. one spent a lot of time sitting in their car. One one couple of times uh, she was sitting in her car. Another day uh, happened to be me. Um, I stopped, and her head. This was a different girl. Her head was down, and I waited, and I tooted my horn, and her head didn't pick up. <laughs> So She's then sleeping. I thought, oh my golly. something's really wrong here. So I got out of the car and I tapped lightly on the window and then I banged on the window and she was sound asleep. Oh, wow. So um, it looked like a different group on um, Labor Day weekend. It was definitely um, a, di a different Labor group Day of weekend, people. Labor Day weekend, the regular girl that was there had to leave and do something else. So. Jim hired another woman that um, sometimes films for 79, oh, okay. yeah. and she was there. That makes sense, because I was like, this doesn't look like somebody would be working for security, but she was so nice. Welcome! Happy Labor Day! She was great. <laughs> she I was like, hired this after wonderful. After all this to be yeah. yeah, yeah. She said it was difficult. She said this was one of the yeah, so dogs come, she is it being during like the, the beach camera. hours that the dogs are at, yeah. at the beach, or is it yeah. after hours? At, during the beach, and so... Is, well, I they guess. walk in. They come in their cars, and then they take a walk around the loop, and they come in where the gate is um, by the picnic area. Or you know. And do they walk the whole beach, or do they, no, they sit they over just, by the picnic area? Sometimes they sit over by the picnic area. Sometimes they let the dog run loose. Sometimes they just walk the dog on the yeah. beach. Yeah. They let the dogs run loose while you're all sitting there, while yeah. people are sitting on the yeah. beach there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You take their pictures with a, your cell phone? No. Um, no. <laughs> no. No more. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> what, what are people, what's their feedback Why? when you say something? Well, then? one day I said something to a, a gentleman. I said, I'm sorry, there's no dogs allowed in here. He goes, I'm getting the dog a drink of water. So he went over to the water fountain and he had a bucket with him or whatever. I said, oh, okay. I said, I'm sorry, I just tried to save you some money. If the animal control officer comes down here, you'll get a ticket. And he goes, I doubt highly I'd get a ticket. Oh, you would? Because I walk my dog, but I don't park there. I park at the church and then walk down into a loop. And one time I was walking along the road and I kind of dipped in along on the grassy strip by the road. Mm. And the... Um, uh, Adam, yeah, he was there and he was going to give me a ticket. And I at wasn't Pear even, Tree or at Weed Beach? At Pear Tree, and yeah. I wasn't even. I've never in the seen him at Pear Tree. If you're not in the, if <laughs> you're not on the other well, side on the of the grass, fence, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. No. He, was not, he didn't yeah. give me a ticket, but was he this, no, no. this was a couple of years ago. Yeah, but this wasn't right. during the no, summer. No, no, he's no. never down there during the summer. Uh, he's not there when we have a gate guard. He's only there when we have afterwards. He comes in once in a while.
Cause so I've the other, the there. only other thing that you know uh, for, for uh, pear tree is the, uh, you know, we're waiting for the bathhouse repairs. Yes, so. there's fifty thousand dollars was approved in the budget as we all know, and I'm hoping they're going to have that on their agenda next week. Hopefully soon, but they, they, so there is, as you can tell, there's been a lot going on. So, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully then they'll, they'll get to it now. Yeah, I think they should start now mm -hmm. because by the time they get everything <laughs> in place, then they could start it maybe in March and April and we could have a nice bathhouse come summer. That would be good. Which Here. would be really nice. I agree. That's it. Okay. Uh, so are there any uh, any uh, um, any working groups? Anybody else that you know yeah. gonna give us a report? Not yeah, a we're, park, gonna, we're gonna get we're gonna get. Uh, <coughs> yes, go ahead. Invade. Does the invasives have you met yet, uh, Patty? Are you all meeting? Oh my God! Driving home from Vermont, all I could see was invasives coming down the highway. I know. Like, I it gets me too oh, yeah. now. Just now I right pay. I gotta say, um, I pay attention. We did. We did a few weeks ago, and oh, okay. then but we're gonna be meeting again in two weeks. So I'll give you an update. Then. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. All right, now monuments and ceremonies. Okay. To go down my list. Um, just to say that they're working on the Veterans Day plans. That's November 11th, and that is going to be a Saturday this year. There's going to be a service at 11 o'clock at Town Hall, laying of wreaths, flowers, readers, taps played, proclamation from the president they're expecting, and churches are asked to toll the bells, and the VFW um, will retire the flag. Um, the only other thing, I, I was at the meeting yesterday here, as a matter of fact, um, and it's a lovely group, incidentally, if you ever want to see a group that works well together and works hard. They talked about their display case downstairs that they have sponsored, and it's available for artworks or displays of any kind. Um, applications are available on the town website. If any group you know of wants to use it, they can apply to use it. That's it. They did a nice job for 9-11. They, they did. I, yeah. Yeah. It was very short this year, but it was, um, it's always... At Middlesex? Important. Behind Middlesex, yeah, they do. Nice They've really job. done a lot. Yeah, yeah there were a lot of it, police, a lot of fire, a lot of first responders, post-53. Mm -hmm. It was, it's always a, a tough... 22 years. A tough day, but it's, it, they do a nice job. Are the display cases um, temporary or rotating, or is it, it permanent? It used to be in the front them? hall when you came in yeah, the front hall. Yeah, I remember hall. that. Mm -hmm. Now it's down at the bottom of the stairs, right in front, in the front hall. Okay. No, but are the things in the display case rotated, or are they in there for good? I think, no, no, they are rotated. They change, and usually it's monthly. Once you put open. something in that's, there, that's you can do it. That's I was wondering yeah. why that You can that came fill out, out an application form. So how long would they be displayed I for? I think they probably month. do a month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Try to be, you know, appro seasonal, you know, appropriate. But it's not always, you know, it's not always filled either. So if you have something, it's a good thing to think about mm -hmm. putting something there I know they had a, I just I, I listened to too many meetings but they did they've over they overspent their budget last year because they do good work yeah, well, they, they, <laughs> they got a little they raised their maybe. they raised their budget. remember you probably noticed that their budget was raised um, in this next year's uh -huh. budget so uh -huh. yeah they do good work uh, Coastal Advisory? Yeah, they had a meeting on Monday night. I did not go to it. I did listen to the bulk of it. It was over two hours, so I did skip around a little bit. I to <laughs> <laughs> uh, but actually, John Zagrotsky was there in the beginning. and Well, he, he stayed for almost the whole meeting, and they had a very long discussion about Great Island. There were a lot of questions asked. Um, he, he answered as many as he could. N nothing very specific, but uh, John said that the Great Island Advisory or Committee would be looking to coastal waters to work hand in hand with them as far as the water access of Great Island and coming up. I mean, obviously, it's down in the future a lot further. Um, so there was a lot of talk about that. Actually, um, they did talk about the dredging 
and they were going to check with the Board of Selectmen because they weren't exactly sure how far out the dredging went that is, is in the works, because I guess they have seven years to do the dredging from when the permit is issued. Aye. Well, well, there were two years and then five years, so it was a total of seven years, I guess. Excuse me, where was the dredging? Well, it hasn't happened oh, yet, where but is it, it would be from the boat ramp. Oh. And they were trying to know exactly how far At around it would come. point you're talking mm -hmm. about. Um, the harbor master was there and he would like to work on some ordinances and so they're forming us they have a subcommittee going that will work on the ordinances they there was a long discussion about putting additional buoys over going towards Great Island um, with speeding there was a lot of discussion about enforcement like <clears throat> unfortunately the the buoys that are the speed limit buoys that are in place right now in Darien Harbor as well as over by Ziegler's motors don't always abide abide by <laughs> so I can I can attest to that having been on a sailboat on a mooring and boats go very fast yeah. but anyway it's all it's all being worked on so the discussion is if you put more buoys in of, of speed limits is it going to just remind people that they should slow down, or is there a way that it can be enforced a little bit more? Is this just by Ziegler's? Probably around more for Scotts Cove, as it goes. Because you can't really get into Scotts Cove the way you can into Ziegler's. Right, but it's more like it, the, the Harbor Master has to also work with the state, because the state has to mm -hmm. get involved. So it's a very, very long discussion. I'm giving a really quick synopsis mm -hmm. of all of that. I'll watch that meeting. Yeah, um, they talked about actually, the, the water quality and they do go out and they test the oxygen level they had just done it on Monday morning and they actually do it in places not where you swim but really for more the, the wildlife um, and uh, right mean, now it was about 75 percent you mean offshore you're talking mm -hmm. there, well, there was one over by Ziegler's there were there were four spots that they did I think one was Darren Harbor one was by Ziegler's one might have been closer to Weed Beach but again it wasn't for swimming it was more for the wildlife well they have Oyster beds all right, over yeah, the place. Right, right, right. There and Ziegler's. Yep. And then they talked about, someone asked about a comparison or a compare year over year, which hadn't oh, been done. Question. But <coughs> Bill Cabers said that he has all the data points. It's just a matter of trying to put it all together to see, you know. And certain people on the commission said they felt that the water was in, in much better than it's been. I mean, every year it, it does get better, even though it still could use improvement. Do you know if they tested the uh, Holly Pond at all? Um, so I, I took a lot of notes and I, I did a quick, trying to remember if there was one area over by Holly Pond or not. That's typically been uh, really bad mm -hmm. for yeah. the wildlife and for the wildlife. It's never been much, I mean, people swim in it, but it's... No, I, no, I know. I yeah, mean, I've, uh, I've lived on it for 30 years, but, oh. <laughs> but you know, back when Yvonne Klein was was um, in charge. She w I had long conversations with her about testing and I've been to many departments uh, here. <laughs> yeah. Because we, we are, I don't have a seawall, but so the water comes up into my yard and I've had sick dogs and sick kids and you know, everybody that's out in the water in my yard. So I just wondered if yeah. they had picked up on it because it got dropped for many years. And yeah, and, and I guess the question is when you test the water then whatever the quality is, what can you do to improve it? Right. I mean, it's, that's, it's great to have the data, but then what do you do with the data? Um, um, they also talked about possibly, I guess, early in the season they did have a day where they were picking up trash. In, I mean, it's always a problem in the sound, and the, how the trash washes up on some of the, sound, uh, on some of the ground. And then they had a long discussion about um, when people apply for docks and how there's a, the state says one thing and then the, the town really doesn't have a lot of jurisdiction on some of the some of the docks that go out so um, it was more just a discussion nothing was nothing was decided one way though because it sounds like it's really the state that comes down and, and decides as far as dockage is concerned but the town must have some ordinance about going from the town the land over into the water. So you go to EPC or you go to ZBA or you go to P and Z, but then the state can supersede that. Yes, there are there are certain, I guess, regulations, and then the state also gets involved. The state has the final say in it. But the Harbor Advisory Commission can um, write letters 
to the DEP yeah. and the Army Corps of Engineers to explain whether or not they think the dock is in the appropriate place by way of shellfish beds right. or, you know, low, not enough water for the boat to be there and all that stuff. So they can write a letter to, you know, One say of the, whether they think it's a good idea or yeah. they think it's a bad idea. One of the new commissioners um, basically went through this whole process and hired a lawyer. And he was giving his input, which was a little different than some of the other experiences that people had had. So um, that was kind of the, the gist of the meeting. And the harbor master is trying to figure out the whole moorings, you know, people. There is a long, a long waiting list. Um, there's just so much. It looks like you could put moorings different places, but the depth of the water is, is very different in, in different parts of the Are harbor. you talking about diff more moorings like in Ziegler's and Scott's, or are you talking about near the Darien Boat Club? Just, there's all, a, there's all a long over. list of, of moorings all over. Yeah, yeah. So that was kind of interesting. interesting. Yeah, two sounds hours. like a good meeting to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. There's a lot more to it, obviously, for two hours. Um, Alicia's not here. She, no, not Alicia. Um, uh, Alicia, thank you. Um, was going to take care of the beautification commission, but she's not here tonight. She's sick. Your kid's back in school three mm. three days, and everybody's <laughs> sick. Um. <laughs> now her too. Mm. Um, the Five Mile River Commission. I haven't had anybody um, a volunteer for that, which they don't. You wouldn't. Um, <coughs> it really would be me reading the minutes, guys. That's all it would take. We need somebody who lives on five miles. Well, that would be good if anybody did, but <laughs> could read the minutes. The next <laughs> and report, <laughs> couldn't you? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Keep thinking about it, everybody. Okay, so that kind of brings me to that. Uh, that's sort of the end of the working groups and committee reports, um, which mostly is the mostly my chairman's report too. It's all just in, was intertwined. So, um, but do we need more subcommittees? Um, Great Island. Do we need a subcommittee to follow Great Island? I don't think you don't at think the moment have, have much think. input. You, they don't I didn't want say. I just think we, they don't. Not asking for us to. No, 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 much. no. They're not. It. I'm not talking about telling them what to do. I'm talking about following what the uh, the advisory yeah, committee I, is doing. I think, and I think Mark they're going to have subcommittees. Yeah, and I think with Mark Adeletta being our RTM rep at this point, he can certainly be the the link and then as they get further into the working maybe a subcommittee but um I, let's look and see what their subcommittees are because they talked about them but they, i don't think they've um done it yet yeah. mark's yeah. going to give a update at the next yeah, rtm yeah. meeting yeah because mm -hmm. we put it yeah he will so he will know more yeah, more from that but that was my thought if they break into subcommittees and it depends on what they're looking at in those subcommittees yeah. some of it won't won't pertain to us at all but some of it might or we well, might be interested in it. Well, in say we form one, will they let us participate or, you know, that's... We'd be following it, just like we follow other uh, things. Yeah, like I don't participate in coastal waters, I just follow it. So, so we can stay in yeah. informed about what they do. So and then if we want to be a, have an advocacy group at some point, then we could do that. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, right. I don't think but not for, the, the not for yet. now, exactly. I think exactly. a long ways away from it, that. I think so too. Right yeah, now. I mean, right yeah. now they're focusing right on. Right now, it's more or less public works is right. Yeah, in yeah. a bailiwick yeah. because of. The well, they did. Part they the did get a, their I special watched. permit for right. the for the stables. Yeah, um, right. but they're still working on access. I mean, so. right now they're focusing on access mm -hmm. and uh, accessibility and safety I mean, and. You know, I think the best thing is if we all parking. listen to their or watch or yeah. I, did I, anybody go, go or go to? I didn't go. I'm, I'm going yeah. on it because I didn't. Oh I right, yeah. part of the RTM last time, so, so cool. I well, signed they, up and I got a spot. Oh, the ones that happened last. No, it's the 23rd. Oh, this one. Oh. coming up. Oh, the, oh. the bus tour. The bus tour. Is, that's the the bus tour. I thought they were. I, was the 23rd. Are you allowed to get off the bus or? Are you yes, they're stopping in two different locations, is my understanding. Oh, yeah. I don't. I don't think well, it'll be as much of a walking looking as, as we were able to get yeah. before. Right, and I was you know, not really good to going but, but it's sure better. It's good to get well, on the island. Apparently, so. they filled up in less yeah. than an hour. Yeah. I believe so I did John check. John Krosky told me in particular. I was talking to him about the whole Great Island thing at a social function, and he saying that they're definitely going to schedule more because I they filled up so quickly. Yeah. 
and well, you know, but they, they were all really closed. focusing. <laughs> on I mean, I checked online, and yeah, I, nobody's going to be going in the in any of the buildings like we no. were able to. They might be able to go in the stables, though. He he was all everyone's enamored by the stables and the treadmill for the horses yes, and I'm not sure. you know. <laughs> it is cool. I didn't know they had treadmill for I horses. I think the, the bus tours they will probably allow they them to us go. Yeah, no. they didn't let they us in. I went in. Well, right. I went in. Well, we, 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 we walked through, through the... They changed they it. Yeah, to, uh, I think it changed it. We have the same tour. They changed it because somebody in, like that went and touched a horse. That rainy, that and at that morning. point, yeah. they they said, yeah. no yeah. more going in well, to we were in. the stable. Oh, we didn't yeah. pet the horses. No, I don't want to pet the horse. Right, no, but we were in, and they were telling us all about the tiles and the, you know... Yeah, it was really interesting. Okay, guys. Yeah, yeah. So All they, right. They will probably allow the bus tour they people to see that. Okay. Well, let me move on then to my chairman's report because I'm almost sorry. finished. Any, anybody? Anything else about that? So not not yet is the answer there. Maybe if the uh, if the um, if the commission has a subcommittee on the pickleball, maybe we'll <laughs> we'll follow that too. But we, that's a, that's an if and a win. So we'll wait on that one too. Um, chairman's report is um, the 20, oh, 23, 24. I'm so sorry uh, Andy and Tony aren't here um, because the, the mower, I saw. the Toro <laughs> mower, it costs uh, even yeah. more. <laughs> so it's more? Yes. How much is it? Where is Andy? Oh, 100, 101,905 oh and 43 for cents. And that's yeah. the reason why, because that lead time is 18 to 24 yeah. months, so each year they charge 4% more. Jesus, that's crazy. And so, a few more dollars we could get a Corvette or something. So anyway, there was... Um, you can uh, get two Pam at, asked <laughs> for a. Um, oh, no, I mean the soup duck. Oh, oh. <laughs> pa pa <laughs> Evidently, it's very special, <laughs> and you know, there's no, you can't get it anywhere else. So th this is it, and uh, so they asked for a transfer um, of eleven thousand nine hundred and six dollars from the McGowan Foundation project because they think they're going to have extra there. So they, so they and so that's pending uh, with the board of finance. Okay. From which McGuan project? The foundation. The uh, okay. You know, <laughs> you know, they think there's going to be. She think they think there's going to be extra. There. And they it's asked her. It's the Are you sure? She sure? said yes. We, we think so. It's, they've had a second, you know, estimate. Anyway, so um, October fest, October seventh, October seventh is a big day. Cut the ribbon and, yes. and then go on over to um, Highland Farm and uh, twelve to six. I think it is. It's a party, music, food, crafts. Other business. <laughs> Proposed changes to Appendix B of the town code. I'm happy to discuss. <laughs> or not. Um, uh, we need our com we need comment any comments in that you have to say by September 27th. So rules can talk about them on the second. If anybody wants to talk about it now, I'm happy to talk. No. Um, I only saw sort of two things. Um, I saw well, a few things, but we don't need, we don't need, we to, need talk. to talk about it now. Yeah. yeah send me an email, you yeah, know, or you can send it to me or you can send it to directly to, da to uh, Davis. Just one quick question overall. So, um, because I think it, it could end up being, um, a lot of people could end up having opinions. And I assume they're trying to get it in place b before the next RTM is seated. But what would be the downside if it had to go one more month? I mean, okay. I, there isn't. There's there is no downside. Because I do no think problem. it's a, they don't it's really a clean up thing. Right, yeah. it is a clleanup thing. Right. And mm -hmm. I appreciate the, I totally outdated. appreciate the work that's been done. Yeah. But there may be some members that, that have opinions and I would I would hate for them not to be able to give those opinions sure. Um, sure. and rush it through because those guys spent an awful lot of time on this and it's a document that should last for a long time. So um, I'd like it even if they had to wait a month. I uh, let them know that there, there was one thing in the matrix that environment for that had parking rec um, listed, and it's not us. So I mean, I, I picked that up last year, but I thought I had told them. Yeah. Maybe I didn't. I'll send you an email. But at any rate, yes, yeah, send me an email. Anything else that you want me to pass along? And uh, but that was the only thing. The other thing, um, yeah, we won't go into it. There was a. Uh, um, Maybe I'll say it. Where Somewhere in there, it used to say that rules would, you know, put um, um, two people on, on on each committee, and that, that seems to not be in there now. 
And so I wonder if maybe it would be a good thing to try to ha you know have um, distribution, you know, have have people on each committee. Um, I put a goal of one person per district. It, oh yeah, I, I totally absolutely. agree. We I mean, try to do two, and then once in a while, if they're, I mean, F and B demands a lot of time, right? Education, our committee, Parks and Rec demands a lot of time. So, it's a it's a real balance between people's area of expertise, and it fits them on finance, or they have the time to do all this extra time on Parks and Rec. And then, so what happens with all due respect to our friend Frank Huck is TGS and A is usually the committee that it last gets sat unless people want to be on that for right, specific right, reasons. Right. So that's really the committee that ends up with one. And interestingly enough, Public Works used to be the one that not as many people went on. And I remember I chose to go on at one time just because they couldn't fill it. And it was great because you learned so much. And look, now Great Island so important, but you learn a lot about flood yeah. mitigation. So I think that's what you know, I think what our district chairs do and our committee chairs so do I think, is so just I will try and emphasize I will certainly that. pass that along. Yeah. So anything else, any other but thoughts? But we do try and balance yeah. it, right? Yeah. But once in a while, if there's a district that has three people that want to be on F and B, you want to hit that bid. And if you're down one for, for TGS and A, but they have an extra spot because they haven't filled anybody in there, it's an open seat in the district, then we say, okay, but the next one needs to be on TGS and A. Yeah. That's, yeah. So, okay, doc. And then there was just really verbiage and words, you know, that were kind of very old-fashioned that needed to be updated, I would say. I think they kind of just sort of flipped it and rearranged it. So a lot of it that may have been in the de committee descriptions to begin with is now sort of in this overarching thing. And then the description. To make it more, yeah. yeah. So, all right. We, we can go home. That's good. Okay. Do you need a motion? So see, I make a mo I, I think Sandy uh, made the motion yes. to, to adjourn. Yes. Second. I'll oh. second. Yeah. Right. All in favor. Yeah. Aye. 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 Thank you for a good meeting. Thank you.